Your doctor has recommended that you have surgery to repair a torn rotator cuff. But what does that actually mean? Rotator cuff is the term given to describe a group of four tendons that work together to support and stabilize the shoulder joint. Each tendon connects muscle to bone. When a shoulder muscle contracts, it pulls on a tendon which in turn pulls on the upper arm bone and causes it to move. When one or more of these tendons become damaged, the arm loses strength and mobility. The choice of treatment for a torn rotator cuff depends on the kind of damage that has occurred, as well as the state of your health and the condition of the rotator cuff tendons themselves. Often rest and medication are prescribed following an injury to the shoulder, but surgery is often the only solution that can restore strength and mobility to torn tendons. Your doctor has recommended surgery because he or she believes that it is the best alternative for you. It is important to understand that the success of this procedure will depend on the health of the tendons in your shoulder. If damage has been caused by deterioration due to age or disease process, repairing the tendons may not restore full strength and mobility though the procedure may relieve some chronic pain. It is possible in rare cases that your doctor could learn during the operation that your rotator cuff is not healthy enough to tolerate this operation. In that case, you will wake up having undergone surgery, but not the repair of the ligament. Of course, no surgery is completely risk-free. But your physician believes that if you decide not to undergo the recommended procedure, your quality of life will not improve and your ability to move your arm normally will be affected. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. If you are receiving general anesthesia, the anesthesiologist will administer it by injection and using an inhalation mask. The surgeon will then apply an antiseptic solution to the skin and place a sterile drape around the operative site. To perform arthroscopic surgery, your doctor will make three small buttonhole size incisions in the area around the shoulder. An arthroscope is essentially a very small video camera that your doctor will use to guide the surgery. Before your doctor can insert the arthroscope, the surgical team will inject a clear fluid into the joint. This fluid will inflate the interior space around the surgical site and will help your doctor by providing an unobstructed view and enough room in which to work. Your doctor will insert the arthroscope and inspect the surgical site. If he or she decides that the team can proceed with the arthroscopic procedure, other small surgical instruments will be inserted through the other small openings. First, your doctor will use a burr to file away any rough edges on the upper part of the shoulder bone, called the acromion. Under the deltoid muscle lies the bursa, a protective sac that prevents the rotator cuff tendons and the shoulder muscles from rubbing against each other. Using a shaving instrument, your doctor will cut away the bursa to gain access to the damaged tendons. Next, the surgeon will cut away any scar tissue or unhealthy tissue around the torn area. Using sutures, the tear can now be repaired. One instrument places the sutures, and then a second instrument fixes them in place.
When your doctor is satisfied that all possible repair has been completed, the instruments are removed and the clear fluid is allowed to drain from the shoulder. Finally, a sterile bandage is applied. In order to keep the shoulder muscle immobile while it heals, you'll be given a sling to wear. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from one to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. At some point, you'll be moved to your room. While you're in the hospital, doctors and nurses will regularly check you, monitoring your progress following surgery. It's important that you realize your time in the hospital is an extension of the surgical procedure. While you're in the hospital, your medical team will continue to monitor your body's immediate reaction to the procedure just performed. That means that your time in the hospital is not really for rest and recovery, and you should expect to have your movements restricted and even your sleep interrupted by nurses or other medical staff. The amount of time that you spend in the hospital would depend on your age, your health, and whether or not any complications arise. Be assured that once your doctor feels that your condition is properly stabilized, you will be allowed to leave. Be sure to follow your doctor's advice and allow the full recommended period of time before you return to your normal routine. Rotator cuff surgery only rarely leads to complications. In some cases, this kind of procedure can result in persistent residual neuralgia, or pain, around the incision site. It can be either localized or general. It may develop soon after surgery or even weeks or months later. In rare cases, the surgery does not restore full mobility or strength to the arm. When this occurs, it is usually because the rotator cuff tendons were damaged in ways that surgery could not fully repair.